The power in my country belongs to idiots. Nadia from Pussy Riot is no stranger to protest. She's been protesting Putin and those in power in Russia for years now, and she spent time in jail because of it. But now the threats seem to be getting worse, with the recent apparent poisoning of her fellow Pussy Riot member and ex-husband, Peter Versilov. Upon discovering that Peter was ill, he was quickly transported to Germany for treatment, where doctors there concluded with a high plausibility that he was poisoned. I asked Nadia what it's like to live under the specter of violence in Russia, what she thinks the motives of the attackers are, and more. Being an activist in Russia doesn't mean that you all the time think that you will end up in prison and you will be killed every given second, because you kind of think about it all the time, otherwise you will go nuts. And if you prefer to think about it all the time, then you should immigrate. And there is, like, I don't think it's a bad option to immigrate. Like, if you feel unsafe, if you feel worried and anxious all the time, then it's, it's good, you can do some things from, from the outside. But if you decide to be in Russia, you just don't... Uh, it's a, it's a psychological hygiene. You kind of think about those things. You kind of forbid yourself to think about them. But as a rational and conscious and adult person, you know theoretically that it can happen. But it's, it's, just, it's just a theoretical thought. It's not, it doesn't exist in you like an actual threat. But when it happens, you're not surprised again because you're ready to be disappointed. Now, Peter from your group recently experienced um, a likely poisoning, and you were with him when he was receiving medical treatment in mm -hmm. Germany. What was that experience like, and, and how is he doing now? Basically, I was the person who uh, organized this medical plane to bring Peter from Moscow to Berlin. And he was in bad condition, but I was really scared that he might be in danger when he is in Moscow. Because if it was a poison, then um, what would stop? his poisoners from doing that again while he, while he is unconscious in the hospital. And uh, when I saw Peter for the first time, it was really scary because I know him as a person who's full of life, who's super dedicated, who's one of the most energetic person actually that I know and one of the most effective activists. He, he was completely out of his mind, <laughs> completely del delirious. He, I doubt that he even recognized me because he, he looked through you and uh, he was just switching from one topic to another every two seconds and I, I would ask him like what is the date of birth of our daughter and he's uh, he's like and i cannot really answer on this question because uh, uh, this russian official Igor Ivanovich station was just arrested so it's really difficult for me to answer i'm like what is the date of birth of our daughter it's a simple question <laughs> yes it's yeah. a, and then when he focuses on something he he remembers but you know, it was it is something uh, that doctors didn't know. They didn't know uh, what kind of compound was it. So um, we still don't know what it was. No, because um, you no know, any like existing poisons that doctors know they couldn't last that long. It looks like it's um, changed chemical formula to make it uh, long lasting, and uh, in order to make it, you have to have like some special laboratories. So they were talking about some sort of advanced military drug. So, yeah, something experimental, most likely. Yeah. Is he fully recovered now? He's, uh, he's physically weak. Okay. Yeah, okay. And, because, and, and it doesn't look like him. <laughs> he's just, he's running around normally with 24 hours a day with, with no sleep, uh, and uh, he's not like that right now, but he, he will recover. And what was the most important thing for us that he didn't have any brain damage because after 10 days of him being delirious, we, we got really scared. But luckily, luckily, he, his mental state recovered, okay. so that everything will be fine. Okay. But we cannot guarantee that he is safe right. back in Moscow because we still don't know exactly who was it and uh, exactly why. I have different theories about it, like maybe it's the World Cup action. Right. Maybe it's his investigation of um, deaths of three Russian journalists in uh, Central African Republic. Right. Speaking of poisonings, there was actually a report that they've identified the second suspect in the Skripal poisoning mm -hmm. and that he was a GRU officer. Mm, because he bought a car. <laughs> what? Right, exactly. So I hear that <laughs> people in the Kremlin are really angry about the way that these GRU <laughs> agents have seemed to mess up. What, what's your take on all of that? I love I, that you're laughing at it. That's pretty great. 
I don't know, that's my favorite story. I, I quote it all the time. We, we talk with my Russian friends just with quotes from their interview with Russia Today. Every time when I really hear that, oh, Putin is so powerful. I mean, he is surrounded by people like uh, Bashirov and Petrov, who cannot create the simplest story and tell it to the press. <laughs> there is, there, so, so my point here is like my, my, the, uh, the power in my country belongs to idiots. And <laughs> that's really unfortunate because I know a lot of really great and brilliant people in Russia who can who can be in power, but for some reason this bandits, that's a group of criminals who decided to take the power and now they own the old media and um, they think for some reason that they are legitimate uh, you know, power. That, that's just weird to me. If you want to hear more from Nadia, she's got a new book out called Read and Riot, A Pussy Riot Guide to Activism. That's it for this week's Russia Desk. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to share this video if you liked it and stay tuned for our next episode where we will separate the signal from the noise about this crucial question. Is Trump actually soft on Russia? We'll see you then. You say that you don't like my attitude.